Greetings fans. Today, I'm gonna show you how to tame one of the lizards. So one of my tamest animals in my entire collection are my Ackies. Now you see the tongue flicks as I'm doing this, as he stops tongue flicking. But tongue flicks indicate that they're curious and they're wondering what's going on. So, as you can see, Mac here, not overly fussed by my presence. Definitely not the happiest right now, you can tell in the body language, but he has just woken up. Now, in this video, I want to... What are you doing? I want to differ differentiate differentiate between what's social and what tame is. So, for example, right now, these baby Ackies are social. I've got my hand in here. They don't particularly care. That's a social animal. It means it's not scared of you. But if I go in there and try and pick one up, it will scarper away. Meaning it's not tame. So you can have a social animal that's not tame, but you can't have a tame animal that's not social. Now, all of my animals, bar the juvenile mangroves and my peach, are at least social. And now the goal is to get all of your animals social so they're not scared of you. And if that's a minimum, that your animals are not scared of you, then that's good. That's a good benchmark to have. But if your animals are running away the second they see you, they're not tongue flicking, they're not curious, they're not inquisitive, then you have an animal that's scared of you and you have to try and change that. But how do we change that, Paul? Well, this is what I'm here to tell you. So let's start with captive bred. These are captive bred Kimberly Rock monitors, Varanus glaudi. Now, all I do with these Kims is I just put my finger in their enclosure. I want a couple of tongue flicks, excuse the flicking, because that's the light, the LED. I want a couple of tongue flicks and I try and touch them. I don't try and force myself upon them. I don't try and sort of touch them more than I need to. If they run away, we have failed. So all we try and do, so that there, that is obviously a lizard that's going, oh, I'm a bit scaredy scared. But still curious, still here, still not, overly fussed by my presence i'm okay with that it doesn't help that i've got my phone because the camera does look like eyes i'm slowly just creeping myself to under its chin i'm letting it tongue flick me i'm letting it be incred incredibly curious like, like this one see this one here he's letting me touch him his tongue is going that's it we back out slowly that's us done that's an interaction the same with these other two little Kims. These ones are now backing up because of my phone. But you can see instantaneously curious. Oh, what's going on? Long tongue flicks. Just using my finger to excite them a little bit. They're retreating away. But I, again, I think that's because of my phone. Because these two normally are the better two. Um, but that's it. Done. Nothing scared them. No issues. No worries. No, oh my god, predator. No, I do exactly the same with baby Ackies. Again, these guys are captive bred. They're used to me coming in. They're used to me seeing me. They're used to me coming in, messing around, feeding them. They show no real care to me being in here. They're like, okay. But then I don't do this, but I'm going to do this for the video. Now, I don't normally do this, but I'm doing this for the video. So we have the baby Aki. I am restraining him a little bit here you can see he's sucking air into his lungs to pump himself up that's a sign of stress what we want are the tongue flicks the tongue flicks are good but if i now do this with him it gives him chance to be like okay i'm not in danger i obviously need to try and get it so you can see it but he's like okay i'm not in danger everything's okay here he can freely walk through my hands so now this is a positive interaction but I don't tend to do this. I tend to just interact with them in their enclosure because obviously they're still young and they're getting used to their enclosure. So me taking it out of its enclosure, all of a sudden its brain has got so much to compute. It's like, oh my God, oh my God. So if I'm going to do this, I will do this in its enclosure, sort of scoop them up onto my hand and let them be on my hand in the enclosure. 
I'll be completely honest, I was expecting this to be a bit more frantic um, to sort of show the point of force handling um, and how a monitor would react. But this obviously isn't force handling. I'm allowing it. I'm not restraining it at all. This animal is quite calm and reserved. And this is a positive interaction. So now if we just put him back, see that I went to move my phone, he twitched. He was like, oh God. So I was going to end the video there, but the tongue is flicking. So the brain is going. But like I say, I personally like to get them to be completely used to my hands in the enclosure and never run away before I even think about bringing them out of the enclosure. I was just doing this for the purpose of the video. And it seems to be, like I say, it seems to be that this one, this this one has had like five weeks now of me like pestering it. So they're obviously pretty used to me. But this is what a lot of people will tell you to do. Just take them out of the enclosure and do this sort of stuff. And they normally are quite frantic. So you have to like get them to run for your hands. And I don't recommend that. I think it speaks for itself. The fact that for five weeks, I've just sort of let this animal so all I do with my Aki's, I just come in and I'll touch them. You know, just give them little touches like I do with the Kims. Just little touches, just like this. And then eventually what I do is I, I do pick them up now and then and just let them do that. So I'm almost in a stimulus in their environment. So you can see that the Aki didn't really care that it had come out. But if your animal is running through your hands frantically, super scared, then you're you're etching in its brain that you're a predator and you're something to be scary. That sort of stuff's okay. You can interact with an animal like that. It's, it's like, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. That's not too bad. But then if you've got an animal that's just frantically running through your hands, puffing itself up, like taking in deep breaths of air and puffing its stomach up, then it's not so good. Another way you can interact with your animals <laughs> is by tongue feeding them. And for more shy, flighty animals, this gets them to the point where they understand that you are not a threat and actually you're the reason that they're getting food. And once an animal's tongue feeding, if you just show yourself and you're, and you're present with it whilst it's eating, it will get used to the fact that you are not a predator and you're actually good. And then eventually the animal will get used to you and know that you're a bringer of food and you're, again, a stimulus to its environment and you're not a threat. So they'll feel a lot more comfortable around you. Another thing you can do is hand feed. I personally don't recommend this because it will get an animal to associate your hand with food rather than tongs. It does get them used to coming towards your hand. But again, you take the chance of being bitten and the animals associating your fingers with food. So I don't personally recommend this. And thankfully, Kada here has decided that she's not hungry and not going to bite my fingers or the cockroach. Now I have animals like this. The captive bred can be rock. These guys weren't really socialized in their old home. But again, they're social. They're not scared of me. They're happy to be in my presence. But if I went in there to touch it, they would just dart off. Now, back to the force handling. I do not recommend going in there and touching them. I don't recommend going in and picking them up and ha making them scared and running through your hands. That will not socialize your animal. Being present with them like this, so they get used to the fact that you are here. And again, a stimulus to the environment. For me, that is the best way to socialize and habituate your monitors. You'll find most males will be more bold and females will be more shy. Again, tongue feeding will be your friend. The more you can get these animals to tongue feed, so the more you're present, the more that they get used to you in their environment, the more that they're less scared of you. The less scared of you are, the more likely they are to tongue feed. As soon as they start to tongue feed, you can start to lure them onto your hand and you can start to develop a relationship. Now these Kims are nowhere near as good as my baby Kims and that's why I go in there and touch my baby Kims. But we're gonna try in here and we're gonna see what happens if I go in here towards this male. So you can see instantly, he's like, oh, what's this? Tongue flick, tongue flick, tongue flick. The female is now coming over. So this is, this is good. That's a positive interaction. The animal didn't run away. I'm not going to force my welcome because I don't do this. That's fine. We're going to try it with the female. We're going to come in from underneath like this. She's going to back away. We're not going to follow her. She's jumping. 
So that's that's it. That's an interaction. That's done. Little and often. You can sit here for hours if you really want to in their environment, in their enclosure. You can do that. This little interaction. That's that. That's done. You move on swiftly. That's an interaction for the day. These animals are learning. Oh, okay, well, this guy's been sat here. He's not going to hurt us. He must be pretty cool. Now we want all of our captives to become at least social. So they're no longer scared of us as keepers. Once they've become social and they're happy to stay out in your presence, then you can really work on taming them. But remember, you're the one benefiting from handling, not your reptiles. Don't get me wrong, we all love handling our reptiles, but do it in a small amount where your animal is going to benefit from the stimulus of you. Again, running theme here. It's good for their enrichment, but you don't want them out for hours and hours running around. It's, they, they just don't want to be doing that. With the animals like these mangroves, it's incredibly hard to do the stuff that I've just shown you how to do, purely because the second they see you, they run away. You just have to give them time, especially because they're wild caught. You just have to give them time. Eventually, they will start to realize that you're not a problem. Like Mango, she stays out. She has no issue with me at all. Mango will only ever charge in the sense that she thinks she's getting fed because her food drive is incredible. She's never really scared of me. If I tower over her whilst she's out and I'm interacting with her, she will coil her tail in a display of defense. Understanding your animal's body language is incredibly important when we, when we try to socialize our captives. If you don't understand the signs that your lizard or snake or tortoise or whatever is showing you, then you won't be able to understand if you're pushing the boundaries a little too much. Because the more you push the boundaries, the more that your animal is going to associate you negatively and the longer it's going to take you to socialize it. I see people online putting animals in completely barren enclosures to force them to get used to you. Yes, okay, I can understand a smaller enclosure to habituate an animal to yourself. I can understand that. But why do we feel the need as keepers to be selfish and resort to putting these animals in small, rubbish, dim enclosures just so they have to interact with us? Think to yourself, is that really what you want? Is that really an animal that you want? The animal that's going to come to you because it's got nothing else to do? Or do you want an animal that's going to come to you because it truly learned to trust you and it knows that you give it everything that it needs? It's like Kermit here. I've had Kermit for a couple of years now and he's an incredibly shy animal. And sometimes he likes to come out, sometimes he doesn't. So you see, he gets all excited for it and then he just decides not to. But I never force anything with him. He's an enclosure big enough with plenty of sticks and branches, climbable walls, and he's got plenty of places to hide. He's happy to stay out in my presence. He never used to be, but now he is. And sometimes he even blesses me by coming out. I never force Kermit to do anything. If he wants to come out onto my arm for food, he will. If he doesn't, then I'll just feed him in the enclosure. I think it's incredibly important when you get an animal to really think what you want from your animal. People will message me and they'll be like, oh, what's the best pet monitor? And I'm like, well, what do you want from your monitor? I want to be able to hold it. That rules off quite a few. <laughs> if you want to hold your animals, then you can't be looking at species like mangroves, like peach rose, like tree monitors. Yes, okay, they will interact with you on their terms, but they're not a handling species. So you really need to think about what you want from your captive before you even think about what animal you're going to get. This has been an incredibly basic video on how to tame a monitor lizard. Just the sort of steps that you, the processes you need to take. Remember, don't force handle your animals. Get, the, get to the point where your animal's used to being in your presence and it's not scared to run away. If your animal's not running away when you're presenting itself to it, you can start to build that relationship truly. <laughs> you can build that relationship truly. You don't want your animals to be, you know, got the Rubik's Cube, but you don't want your animals to be running through your hands scared that is not the way to do it. An animal like Kada here, I've never force handled her ever. I can put my hand right on the glass. She doesn't care. She's not scared. She doesn't run away. She will come out if I hold my hand there long enough. Eventually, she'll jump out onto me if that's what you want. I'm going to do another video on wild caught animals. But for the most part, the wild caught animals, you just need to leave in an enclosure where they're going to feed, where they're going to feel secure and where they're going to feel safe. And then eventually, you can put them into an enclosure that's a little bit more sparse so they get used to your presence. And when I'm saying a little bit more sparse, 
I mean a little bit more sparse. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Um, I'm probably just rambling on about it. Um, I need to stop saying um. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video. Boom!